All right, hey, I um, wanted to put a video together here to talk a little bit about hashing and hash tables and PA2. Um, some students are running into issues, um, number one, around how to set up the hash function itself. Um, and I want to talk about um, the function, how to do some, some uh, test code with it, and so on and so forth. And then I want to look at sort of how to move forward if, if you're stuck with you know a pile of functions that you need to implement how do you um, how do you go from step to step um, and so I want to I want to sort of break down a process for getting from here to um, completion of the assignment um, so let's let's do a quick review of of what hashes are all about right the basic setup is we want to store a bunch of information and we know we can store it in a linked list and you know have all these nodes that are connected to each other. And linked lists are, are easy to use, but not very efficient because, you know, we always start at the beginning of the list, and if I want to find something, all I can really do is just move from node to node until I either find the thing I'm looking for, or maybe I run out of nodes and I say, that's not in my list. And if we have a thousand pieces of information stored, we might have to do a thousand of these checks. Um, to find our piece of information or conclude it's not in there. So um, having one big long linked list with a thousand nodes in it, pretty inefficient. So our basic idea um, is to have multiple linked lists. And so instead of having one list that's a thousand entries long, we might have a hundred lists that are each ten entries long. And searching a list that only has 10 nodes in it is a lot quicker than searching a list with 1,000 nodes, right? This would take us, you know, 10 operations. This could take us 1,000 operations. So if we have 100 linked lists, right, theoretically, search and, and um, such will be 100 times faster, right? The trick is, though, how do we know which of these 100 linked lists to look in? If I want to find a license plate A, B, C, 1, 2, 3... Is it in this list, or this list, or this list, or this list? Which of the hundred plates? And if we check every one of the lists, it's no better than just checking one big long list with a thousand entries in it. So we need a bit of magic, right? Which will tell us which of these linked lists we want to actually look in. And that magic is our hash function. And the hash function takes something like ABC123 and we run it through our hash function and we get out an index. And that index is basically, you know, in this case, if we have a hundred linked list, it's a number from zero to 99. And if this license plate hashes to the number 17, it says, oh, checklist 17, right? So it cuts down our search problem from say a thousand possibilities to you know, one small list with 10 possibilities. So that's the whole idea of hashing for us. And this is, this is again, using um, the technique of chaining instead of probing. Probing is another way to deal with, with what we call collisions. PA2, we're just dealing with, with chaining. So we have an array of linked lists. Um, so let's, let's look at this hash function. How do we take something like a license plate and turn it into an index? And so in PA2, we've got a particular function that we're using, um, which is described here. So plate is the thing that we're trying to hash. It's the thing we're looking for. It's the thing that we're going to um, run into our function and try to get an integer out. And so here's the formula that we're using for the assignment. We're going to go through each letter of the license plate, each character. So this is from zero to the string length minus one, right? So that goes up to and including the last character. This is how we get the ASCII code of that character. And we do a running sum. I goes from zero to that, and we multiply by this funny expression, two I plus three squared. And this just gives us a big number. Right, and we take that number, and we reduce it, whatever the size of the hash table is, and that gives us a number from zero to hash table size minus one. So let me write that out. So hash of plate 
equals the sum from i equals 0 to the length of the plate minus 1. And it's 2i plus 3 squared times plate bracket i. And then this whole thing gets reduced modulo hash table size. All right, so suppose our license plate was ABC. The effect of this would be the following. It would be the sum from I equals 0 to 2 of 2I plus 3 squared times, you know, the characters of this. Which means, you know, if I equals 0, it's 2 times 0 plus 3 squared times... And the ASCII code for an A is 65. And then we're going to set I equal to 0, so this will be 2 times 1 plus 3 squared times the ASCII code for a B is 66. And then, um, and then if I is a 2, this will be 2 times 2 plus 3 squared times the ASCII code for a C is 67. And we'll add these all together, and we'll get some big number, and we'll reduce it. And it depends what our hash table size is, but if we suppose, you know, that this is 50, we would reduce this modulo 50. And you can pop this into a calculator if you want, and actually calculate what the value of this would be under this hash function. Right, so 2 times 0, 0 plus 3 is 3. So this is 9 times 65. This is 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 squared is 25 times 66. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7. Squared is 49 times 67. And then divide by 50 and take the remainder. Right. So that's, that's all that this hash function is doing. So if we, if we want to look at some some pseudocode, when we have a summation symbol, that's really talking about what we call a running sum. And so we could do something like, like this. We could have, you know, an integer sum, which we initialize to zero. The summation says, let's make a for loop. So for i equals zero to length of the plate, minus 1. So typically we would do i equals 0, i less than string length of plate. Or you could say for i equals 0, i less than or equal to string length of plate minus 1. i plus plus. So in here we do sum equals sum plus 2i plus 3 squared times plate bracket i. And that's the body of your for loop. And again, how do you do 2i plus 3 squared? Um, we, can, we can just do, you know, 2 times i plus 3 times 2 times i plus 3. That gives us 2i plus 3 squared. Doesn't have to be anything fancier than that. And then multiply by plate bracket i. So this, this initializes the sum to 0. It goes through, you know, each element of this character array, this string, and multiplies, you know, plate bracket i by 2i plus 3 squared, adds it to the sum. And at the end, we could say sum equals sum modulo hash table size, which gives us a number from 0 to, you know, this hash table size minus 1, and then just returns sum. So that's, that's a way to calculate the hash function. And you want your hash function to be its own function, right? Because we're going to have hash init, hash add, hash find. All of these things are going to have to use the hash function. So, so you know, write this as a separate function. Unless you want to write this code, you know, several times, put it in a function.
and so let's let's just do some sample code to see how this works. Um, so I'm going to call this try.c. Don't call your program test, right? Test is a built-in um, keyword in um, in Bash. And if I name my program test and I try to run test, it's not going to actually do anything, right? If I just say um, if I just say test, right? That's just a built-in command. So I'm going to name my program try. And we'll just put together a pretty simple test program. I'm going to use string.h because I'm going to use string length. Um, and let's just do something like this. line main program and I'm going to call my hash function I'm going to give it this string my hash function should return an integer I'm going to print that out and say hash of ABC one two three equals and see what that's equal to and so let's make our hash function And I'm going to not do, you know, PA2's hash function for you. I'm going to do a different hash function. So let's let's just imagine, for testing purposes, we want to do the following. Hash of plate equals the sum from i equals 0 to length of the plate minus 1. Um, and we'll just do um, i plus 1 times plate bracket i and we'll do this modulo some hash table size I'm just gonna fix the hash table size to be 10 right normally we would get this from the hash init function we'd save it into global all of that business we're just gonna do a simpler hash function that uses this function and gives us a number from 0 to 9 so, so what does this look like? Um, so we'll have an integer for our running sum. And then we'll go for i equals 0, i less than. And so again, I'm doing i less than string length of plate, which means i is always less than or equal to string length of plate minus 1. And so that's, that's what this upper index is here. That's what the upper index is in our actual PA2 hash function. So, you know, you can do less than or equal to string length minus 1 if you like, or just less than string length. Um, and so I'm going to do sum equals sum plus i plus 1 times plate bracket i. Right, so this is i plus 1 times the ith character of our license plate, starting from 0. So sum is the result of the summation. And then let's reduce it to a number between 0 and 9, assuming we wanted 10 entries in the hash table. Um, so we can just do sum equals sum percent 10. And we'll return the sum. So there's a sample hash function. Now I've put it inside one file along with my main program. Normally, you know, we would put this in a separate file, like hash.c or something like that. Um, but but for sim simpler implementation, right, I'm just putting this all inside one file. I'm going to need to put in a prototype. So there's the prototype for the hash function. And so now, let's see if we can compile this. It looks good, and if we run it, it tells us the hash of ABC123 is equal to zero. Well, that's kind of suspicious, 
but um, you know, maybe it just happened to be one, two, three. So let's try hash of ABC one, two, four. Right, hash of ABC one, two, four is equal to seven. So this looks like you know it's it's doing something. It's it's not blowing up. It's not always giving us zero. Um, and let's just try one more. Let's try BBC one two four. Right, and that turns out to be equal to eight. And so I'm pretty confident if you actually took the ASCII codes for ABC dash one two three and calculated this sum. Right, the same way that, that we talked about doing it here, and added it up, you would end up in this case with a number that ended in eight. So when you reduce modulo ten, you get an eight. So there's there's you know an example of of a hash function. It's not the PA two hash function, but it's it's not too dissimilar. Um, there's a running sum calculation. There's a reduction modulo, the table size, and so on and so forth. All right, um, so how do we test this? So remember, there's, there's sample code available on the Linux server. And so if I do slash temp slash plate slash temp slash database dot txt, I can say star dump. And I can see um, what each of my linked lists contains. So, you know, database.txt has a thousand uh, license plates, and the default hash table size is 50. So we have 50 linked lists, a thousand entries. On average, you know, our, our lists will be 20 license plates. Um, and when I look at, at the results of saying star dump, right, it says contents of cell 49, this is telling me that each of these license plates hashed to 49. Each of these license plates hash to 48, and so on. So when I write my actual hash function, right, from the PA2 assignment section 4.1, when I write that actual hash function, I can run a test like this, but instead of hashing ABC123, I can hash IHJ-558, and my function should give me a 48. And if I hash NAZ-696, my function should give me a 49. And so that's, that's a pretty direct thing that you can, you can work on to nail down your hash function, right? It's, it's a single function with a, a for loop and initialize running sum, a modulo calculation, and return that. The only small trick here is that, you know, we're now always going to do mod 10. So for this case, you know, we're doing mod 50 because we had 50 entries. But if I run our, our sample code with, um, you know, a size like 20, well, now this, this modulo function is being done mod 20. And when I do my star dump, my lists will be about 50 entries long and um, you know they'll hash to a number between 0 and 19 so if I hash CPI 463 that should give me an 18 and in your actual hash function for PA2 we don't hardwire uh, what we take the modulo of we get that from a variable and that variable is what we give to the hash init function in our main program but we can leave that down the road. We can just use, you know, a fixed hash table size of 50, hash these results, compare it to what we get when we run this with a default setup, and see if these plates hash to 49, see if these plates hash to 48, and so on. So that gets you your hash function. Um, all right, so how do we move ahead from there? Um, So let's let's take a look at um, the other functions you're going to implement. 
And I would go on to your list code at this point, right? So list init is is just making a Sentinel node, and that's that's pretty much PA one's um, init function. But let's do the list add function because list add, remember, you have to you know malloc space for the plate, the first name and the last name, and we're adding to the beginning of the list, so we're not moving through alphabetizing. We're just going right in the beginning after the Sentinel. So this is like the very first linked list code that we implemented week one of the course. Um, so I would get this function working. And this, you know, you can pass it a sentinel node, um, three strings, and it should create a new node, put these three strings into that node, and place it at the beginning of whatever list this is pointing to. And, you know, star sent, you can just do a malloc. Um, and set it up by hand, or if you have your list init, you can say sent equals list init, and then pass that sentinel node to your list add. Once you've got your list add function working, you can go ahead and run your code in GDB and start looking at the nodes in that list, right? Which was also something that we've we've done in class. Um, and if you want to run the debugger on on um, your PAT code, um, the one trick you need to know is how to give command line arguments to a function that you're running in GDB. So let me, let me do GDB um, on the sample code on the server. And if I do this, and I just say start, it's going to um, say continue. It's going to complain, right? Even though I said GDB, um, even though I said GDB, and then the name of the program I'm running, and then the argument to the program, when I ran it, it said, "Hey, you didn't specify a database, right?" So here's how how you run GDB with command line arguments. Go ahead and just say GDB and the name of your program, right? And this would be your program instead of the sample executable, but um, go ahead and, and run GDB with the name of the program. Um, and then um, when you say uh, run, say run and put in the name of your database. And it'll go ahead and run as if you had actually put this on the command line when you ran this command. And if I wanted to put in a, a database size, I could say run you know, 20 slash temp database dot txt. And, and, um, you know, I can say things like break hash find and put a breakpoint, and then I can say go ahead and run this. And if I search for a license plate, right, it'll hit a breakpoint in my hash find function. Now, I can't debug the sample code because I deliberately didn't compile it with debugging symbols. But if you do this on your code and you compile it with a dash G switch, then, you know, you would be inside your hash find function. You can start single stepping through and so on and so forth. All right. So what, what are um, some of the steps I recommend following? Um, get your hash function. To work so write that test it compare it to the sample code and then work on list add and check the result in GDB so so you know make a main program that creates a sentinel node calls list add a few times to add a few nodes to it, and then um, hit a breakpoint and go into GDB and just print out the Sentinel node. Look at what it's pointing to, that thing that it's pointing to, look at what the plate first and last name fields are. Look at what that node is pointing to and print out that node's plate first and last name fields, and so on. Or if you don't want to mess with GDB at this point, um, Go ahead and do your um, your list print function. And once you have these two functions working or written, right, you can you can test them both together. 
right? So make an empty list, add a node, call list print, add another node, call list print, add a third node, call list print. If that works, those functions are probably good, right? Because if it's going to fail, it's probably going to fail as soon as you, you try to print or as soon as you try to add one node or maybe two nodes. So do a few tests on that. And then I would go ahead and I would tackle hash add. All right. So to, to test hash add, you've got to have hash init. And hash init, we've done the code for that in class a few times. That's just a malloc statement. Right, so um, malloc, whatever the size is of your hash table times size of um, hash entry. So your hash table is an array of hash entries. And if you want hash size of those, then the size that you need for this is size of hash entry. And if you multiply that by the number of hash entries, which is hash size, this is how much stuff you need to create your array of linked lists, sentinel nodes. Um, and you can just return this. So that's really what your hash init function does. You have to pass it the hash size, right? But it's it's basically a one-line function. Take the hash size, multiply it by the size of a hash entry, feed that to malloc, return whatever malloc gives you. So so your test program can do the following. You can inside your main program. Make a table that points to a hash entry. That's your array of hash entries. Table equals hash init. We'll just try it with 50 because that's the default for the assignment anyway. And now you can say hash add table ABC123. and put in whatever you want for the first name and last name. And when you come back here, you should have a genuine bona fide hash table with a single entry. So your hash table will have 50 Sentinel nodes. One of those Sentinel nodes will point to a list containing this license plate and this pair of names. Which one? Well, you know, use your hash function test program, see what ABC123 hashes to. If it hashes to a seven, now in the debugger, you could say, you know, print table bracket seven. That should be a sentinel node that points to a list that will contain this. So if you print table bracket seven arrow next, you should be looking at the first node, which will contain this information. And so that should be the address. And then if you print star table bracket seven arrow next, maybe put parentheses here, right? You should actually be able to see that node. So now you're, you're off and running, right? This, this creates a hash table, creates a bunch of linked lists, creates a node for a linked list, puts some information into that node, sticks it into one of the linked lists, right? That is your PA2 right there. Right, it just happens to have only one piece of data in it. But if you get this working, you can get the whole thing working. So go into GDB and explore this structure, not just to see if it works, but to help understand it. Right, being able to to poke around and see what table seven is, and stare at it and think about it, and is this an address or is it a node, and what does that mean, and what happens when I do this, and is that an address or is it a node, what does it mean, right? Really, really get in there, draw some pictures, right? Make a picture of your hash table, write out index seven, and, and record what value is in there, 
and then maybe use the X command to go into memory and look at that address. All right, this is your chance to really, really dig in. So the GDB quiz was was a warm up. It's it's a way to do some of this stuff, you know, in a very structured way where where I gave you specific things to try to find out. But more generally, GDB is a way to just explore the environment and see what's going on. And knowing what you're looking for is part of the challenge, right? But, but if you don't know what you're looking for, just look at everything. Try to make a picture on paper of your array of hash entries, of a particular hash entry, of the sentinel node that is stored here, of the thing that that sentinel node points to, and so on. And the more time you spend in GDB, the more time you dig into the memory of the machine and study it using this tool, the more you're going to understand what's going on with these structures. And that's going to be invaluable for PA3 when we're doing binary trees, because then we're just going to be creating stuff out of thin air all the time. And we're going to want to be able to use GDB to um, as our main tool to go in and, and see what we've created and what's pointing where. So so start with the hash function, do your list add and list print, get those working, and then move on to your hash table. And you know, initialize your hash table and get your hash add function working. And hash add, remember, is a one liner, right? Hash add is is basically just a list add. So list add takes a sentinel node. Well, which sentinel, sentinel node do we want? We want um, table bracket some index. And then, you know, the fields that we want to add. But what is this index? Well, it's just the result we get from hashing the plate. So in this case, you know, we would take ABC123, run it through our hash function. If it gives us a 7, then this would be table bracket 7. But in the more general setting for our function, right, if we call this variable plate, we're going to call the hash function with that variable plate, take the return value we get back, use that as an index in the table. This thing right here, that's the sentinel node. All right. Hopefully that helps, you know, at least at least move forward more um, with some progress. Um, try that out. See what you can get to um, come by office hours with questions. All right. Thanks. Bye.